Hey everybody, John Fenn here, Church Without Walls International, CWOWI.org. I'm going to get right into it today just because of the length of, of this message. Today I'm talking about how to have fellowship with Jesus. And what I mean by that, this is something deeper, some of you will relate to it, but I want to share with you how to feel that, that closeness with the Lord, how to, to enter into that intimate relationship with the Lord, where you have that, that not only believing in Him, but knowing Him. You know, when you were a kid, you had a best friend, I'm sure. Uh, you had somebody, a, a friend that you knew, and you had something in common. The word fellowship, koinonia, means to share in common. And 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, says the Father God is faithful. The Father is setting it up. And it says he, God is faithful who has invited us into the fellowship of his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The word fellowship means, uh, koinonia, means to have in common or to share in common. In other words, he's talking about two people sharing between themselves what they have in common. And this is where I'm talking about we're going, going deeper in this. When the Lord started visiting me back in April of 1986, and if you followed me and, and visit our website and all that, you know of, of the, the times that the Lord still to this day visits me. And part of that is my call, I understand that. But nonetheless, uh, there is a closeness that the Lord and I have and a walk that we we have. Can I tell you part of the secret of that? Early on, when the Lord started visiting me, there was a time where he looked deep into my eyes. And I knew there was communication that was happening, if you've ever looked into his eyes. And what I knew was that he was loving a particular part of me. It's kind of like when you were kids and you had a best friend. Maybe maybe you liked fire trucks, you know, and you had model fire trucks, or maybe it was model airplanes and you found that in common. Maybe it was like you like horses, they like horses, you you like that, or you found that. Maybe it was something more disastrous. Maybe your your dad had left the family, maybe their dad had left the family. You had something in common, and, and though you liked each other, it was the commonality of that one or two elements that made your friendship. All right, so early on, that happened between the Lord and I, and, and I want to share with you that you can have that too. And what it was when he was looking into my eyes, I realized that he appreciated and he loved the fact that I loved the Father as he loves the Father, that the Father God is first and foremost in my life. To this day, the Father God is first and foremost. You know, John 17, 3, Jesus said, this is eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and your Son, whom you have sent. And in 1 John 1, 3, the Apostle John writes towards the end of his life, and he says this, he says, truly our fellowship is with the Father and also with his Son, the Lord Jesus. My fellowship is first and foremost with the Father. And when the Lord looked into my eyes, I realized the part of me that he liked, the part of me that he appreciated, was that I love the Father like he does. Now, of course, it's not on the same scale. Don't, don't think anything like that. But little old me, you know, finite human being who is create, who was created by the Lord, but and yet his creation had developed this love of the Father, and he was appreciating that in me and loving that in me. There was another element of camaraderie in the in the the fact that when my dad left when I was eleven and a half years old, I felt like I was in charge of my mom and my two brothers and my sister. There was a great weight of responsibility, and there was a camaraderie there with Jesus in that Joseph had obviously died somewhere between Jesus' 12th year and 30th year because we don't see Joseph after uh, Jesus was 12 years old and in the temple and they searched for three days for him. Uh, there wasn't, there's a, you know, he Jesus was suddenly in charge of his mom and his brothers and sisters. You know, and in case you don't know, don't know that Jesus did have brothers and sisters, uh, Mark 6, uh, 3 and Matthew 13, 55, they say, isn't this, the carpenter's uh, son, isn't this the car in one version, isn't this the carpenter, isn't his mother Mary with us, aren't his 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 brothers, uh, uh, James, Joseph, Simon, and Jude here with us, and his sisters as well. That's uh, uh, Matthew 13, 55, and 56, I believe. So anyway, there's that commonality there. So what I'm saying to you is this, ever since that day, I've realized the commonality the, the fellowship in the truest sense of the word, the sharing in common between Jesus and me is that we both love the Father God. He's first and foremost in our lives. And obviously, like I said, I'm just a little human being, so my love of the Father is completely different than his, and yet it is the same. 
So go back to, like I said, your, your childhood friendship. What did you have in common? And what and apply that now to Jesus. What do you share in common with Jesus? Was it the fact that you were both hated? That you were both misunderstood? That you both offend people? Was it the fact, you know, Paul wrote about it. Paul found that commonality in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. He says, I want to know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. The word fellowship, in other words, what we might say in the Greek, I want to know the well. I want to know the power of His resurrection and what we have in common in our sufferings. In other words, Paul had been persecuted. He'd been beaten. He'd been he'd had stones thrown at him. He, you know, all the different things he suffered. And Paul was expressing the fellowship with Jesus because Jesus was suffered. Jesus had suffered. Jesus was tortured. Jesus was misunderstood. All of those things. And there's a fellowship. Paul found a commonality in there, a fellowship, a sharing in common. So I'm asking you, what do you have in common with Jesus? You know, Hebrews chapter 5, and I think it's verse 7, 7 through 9, talk about the time of Garden Gethsemane. It says that Jesus became afraid. He learned obedience as a son, and he feared. And we know he was under great stress. He was going to the cross, and it says that he sweat blood. He was under such stress, the capillaries under his skin broke and blood came out his pores. He was under such great stress. And, and, and so maybe is there's time where you, you have known fear in your childhood now, great fear. Do you have that in common with Jesus? Uh, was it the fact, like, like I said, you know, suddenly I was in charge of my mom and, and brothers and sisters. Uh, what was it, in fact? What was it that you've suffered great temptations and gone through many different things and you have that commonality with Jesus? Find the point of commonality. Find the point where you share similar experiences. You know, it's interesting the way the Lord is and the way he ministers to people um, because we just default to fellowship as something lightweight. It's like, oh, I love Jesus. Jesus loves me. Aren't we, you know, he loves me, you know, and we just default to that. It's so lightweight. I'm encouraging you to go deeper. When you're there worshiping, develop your own worship time. Worship the Father. Worship the Lord Jesus. Express your love for him. Yes, for saving you. But think in your mind, what do you have in common? Scan the life of Jesus. What do you have in common with him? Were you the only child? Or did you did your parent did a parent die or leave the family? Look at his life. Was he were you have you been misunderstood and looked down on even by your own brothers and sisters? Remember in John chapter seven, his brothers didn't believe in him. In John chapter seven, it was the Feast of Tabernacles, and his brothers said, Oh, go up there and prove who you are. And Jesus said, oh, you know, your time is always my time is not yet. So because it says specifically there in John seven, his brothers did not yet believe on him. And so maybe maybe you've got that. Maybe nobody in your family likes you. You know, what Jesus experienced, rejection by, from his own family, even though he was there in the midst of the family and even taking care of them. Find that commonality, what you share in common with Jesus. And then when you're worshiping, as you're worshiping, and you're worshiping that part of it, you will feel his presence. You will feel that presence, that he appreciates that, and that he loves that about you, that you are an overcomer. You have come through great difficulty as he came through great difficulty. You find what you had in common. 1 Corinthians 1, 9, God the Father is faithful. Praise God for that. It is the Father who sets us up to be friends. That, that you are called, you are invited into the fellowship, into the sharing in common with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Father's setting it up, so find what you have in common with Jesus. And then you worship and you sit in his presence. And it's like, wow, Lord, I never thought of you that you have been through something similar. And, and that's what you appreciate and that's what you like about me. To me, it was like that first time where he was he was loving the fact that I love the Father. It was it was almost like a like a father to a son that the that, that in this case I knew Jesus knew I had potential and he loved the fact that I had stepped up in in way some ways to my potential. I'm not believe me, I have not arrived. Uh, you know, but it, it's not that. I just I'm just being transparent here, talking about what was going on between us, and that he he appreciated the 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 progress that I'd made so far, so to speak, and he loved that about me. So so find that place with Jesus. Sit in His presence. Sit in maybe in worship wherever you the Lord has spoken to you. Find that place, and just love on that part of Him that you have in common. Love on that part. How much you appreciate what He went through, and then sit there and let Him talk about and, and communicate to you how much he loves you. And you'll find that fellowship for the rest of your days. You'll find that point of contact, that point of fellowship, that camaraderie the rest of your days. 
All right, God bless.